So the next dot point for how a sports injury is classified and managed is the soft tissue injuries. So here you have a whole bunch of examples listed underneath this dot point. So there's tears, sprains, and contusions. There's skin, abrasions, lacerations, and blisters. And then there's the inflammatory response. Now, when I look at this, uh, I can tell you that the top dot point there are actually mostly deep soft tissue injuries. They're injuries that are going to occur underneath the skin, uh, mostly to your muscle. Okay, and then we have uh, some more surface uh, injuries, which are all your skin injuries. So an abrasion is a graze to your skin. The lacerations that cuts and blisters is a skin injury. And the inflammatory response is essentially the way that your body will respond to any form of soft tissue injury. So when we look at uh, some soft tissue injuries, we have tears. Now tears are are going to be graded and so a sprain so you'll kind of get this doubled up here but a tear can be a grade one which is very minor although it's kind of small um, injuries and if you leave them then that will then lead to overuse injuries uh, and make your muscle weak leading to making it easier for a grade two or a grade three tear a uh, grade two tear you can see that there's actually a proper rip there in that muscle and then a grade three tear is the whole way through now as i mentioned earlier a tear to muscle is actually called a strain, okay, with a T. So a strained muscle is a torn muscle, and it has three grades. Grade one, where there's small little tears, grade two, where you can see that it's actually beginning to rip, and grade three, where it is completely ripped. We then do a similar thing when we look at a sprain. So a sprained ankle, or a sprained elbow, or a sprained knee, whatever kind of sprain it is, there are three grades, and it's much the same. Grade one, small little tears that if you don't treat, make your ligament weak um, and can lead to a more serious sprain later. And also, if not treated, can lead to overuse injuries in your ankle. Uh, a grade two, you can see that it's actually beginning to tear through the ligament properly. And then a grade three is a complete tear. Okay, so the same thing for a sprain and a strain in terms of the grade one, grade two, grade three. Um, but you just need to make sure that you're aware that one's a sprain for uh, ligaments and one's a strain for muscles. And then we have contusions. Uh, contusions are mostly known to you as like a dead leg or a cork. Okay, um, And essentially what's happening is that you have an impact. Contusions are almost, pretty much always going to be um, direct injuries from an impact, an external force that squashes the muscle and then leads to small tears, rupturing of blood vessels and stuff uh, that are in the muscle at that exact spot. And that then causes the weakness in the muscle, the pain in the muscle, and leads to the inflammatory response kicking in and your muscles swelling up and being larger. Uh, so it's actually like a whole bunch of minor little tears and um, the pressure from the squashing of the muscle causes blood vessels and stuff to pop. And so that's why you get really deep bruises uh, and stuff from your um, cork leg, which is a contusion. So they're your deep soft tissue injuries, so your tears, your sprains, and your contusions. In terms of managing soft tissue injuries, there are, you know, this is the, the main way it's taught to you in first aid, so you sh this should be very familiar to you if you were there for prelim. So first thing you do is rest, okay? Now rest means not moving the area that is injured. Okay, so if you are in the middle of sport, you stop, you get off, you rest. You will rest until your doctor, your physiotherapist or someone tells you that you can then go back. And often when you go back, your level of uh, intensity and all that will progressively get back to what it used to be. Uh, immediately, you want to apply ice to your injury. So ice is going to uh, help reduce the inflammation. It's going to help reduce the pain uh, that's associated with your soft tissue injury. Uh, and that is going to be good. Often with ice, we're going to do you know either 20 minutes on, 40 minutes off, or yeah, there's lots of different variations to that. But it's important to basically just make sure that you're applying ice, and then your regime that you use is essentially like a two to one type regime where ice is on for one, and you're resting it, you know, and the ice is off for two. You then need to compress um, the injury. So if it's a sprained ankle, like in that image there. You're putting a compression bandage on around that. It's going to help reduce the inflammation. It's going to help reduce the secondary damage that results from the inflammation. Uh, it'll help provide some stability uh, to your ankle to help uh, assist with that rest uh, that you're doing. 
and that will essentially just make sure you're not re-injuring your ankle uh, or injuring it further. You need to elevate uh, the injured site and you need to elevate it above your heart. So if you injure your, injure your ankle, you need to get it up over your heart. Okay, if you injure your wrist, over your heart. And so that elevation helps with the blood drainage and make sure that um, no fluid pools in the area, which again will help to decrease inflammation. And then it's always important that someone actually gets referred to go and see their GP, a physio, or someone who can actually diagnose and assess their injury and make sure that it gets treated properly, can check that it's not a grade three tear or sprain so that the actual injury is getting treated properly. There's less scar tissue, there's no secondary damage, and the athlete can then return to play when they're ready to, uh, and able. So some more surface injuries, so skin injuries, these are gonna be abrasions, lacerations, and blisters. So abrasions are essentially a graze where the skin has been torn off. A laceration is a cut. So you know, there's a finger that's been cut by a knife in the kitchen, it's gonna happen all the time, but lacerations will include stabbings and all kinds of stuff. And then there's blisters. So blisters are a result of um, friction that's at a particular air site causing pus and stuff to develop uh, as part of the inflammatory response. They're your skin injuries. Uh, there's not a lot of detail to them, so understand them well. Immediate treatment of skin injuries. Uh, there are three main things for any skin in injury that you need to make sure that you do. First, you need to control the bleeding. So you need to apply pressure to the area, whether that be a Band-Aid, uh, some kind of compression garment, or you pushing down with a big bandage, uh, you need to make sure that the bleeding uh, is controlled first. Once bleeding is controlled, then you can clean the wound, uh, making sure that you're killing it with uh, killing all the bacteria, any viruses and stuff that may get in there. Uh, often people use alcohol wipes for that, or Benadine, or there's a whole bunch range of other things uh, that can be used to clean wounds. But you want it. Um, it's about infection control, cleaning that wound, making sure that no pathogens get in. Uh, to cause further damage. And then of course you want to make sure that you cover um, that wound with some kind of sterile non-stick dressing. You don't want the dressing to stick to the injury because then when you pull it off you're going to re-damage the injury uh, and you want it to be sterile to make sure that, you, know, you didn't just clean it for no reason. You want it to be sterile making sure no infections are going to happen uh, because once your skin is open it's very easy for infections to occur. Here we are with the inflammatory response. This is one of the harder things for students to understand. Uh, essentially, I'll walk you through the three phases, but uh, you need to get an idea that essentially once there's an injury, uh, like a pin going into your finger or something, uh, it allows uh, pathogens to come in, viruses, bacteria, etc. Um, but even just in general, as soon as that injury occurs, your body sends signals uh, to other parts of your body that bring uh, what's called phagocytes um, and leukocytes, which are they're all just essentially white blood cells, they're your immune system. They come and they help clean up all the debris, they help fight against any bacteria or infections that might be coming. Uh, they eat all that up and clean it all out. But then after that, your body then has to start to rebuild uh, the, the damage that's happened. And so it'll start by putting in scar tissue and stuff. But we'll see that as we go through our three phases now. So phase one is the acute inflammation and during this uh, stage the biggest worry for anyone is that inflammation is actually out of kind of out of control it hasn't been stabilized yet so in those first two to three days which is when you're going to be using your ricer and applying that uh, to uh, the injured area uh, you want to try and uh, decrease all the effects essentially of the acute inflammation so acute inflammation uh, lots of vasodilation, so that's your blood vessels dilating and allowing more blood flow. It's allowing for greater um, transitions of things that are in the blood to transition out into the cells around it and into the fluid around it to help fight against bacteria and stuff. And there can be secondary damage because the swelling causes pressure and if the cells in that area can't handle the pressure, they will pop or break or tear. We also have red swollen and painful um, areas when the acute inflammation occurs. You can see in this hand that it's big, it's red, and I have no doubt it's gonna be warm, uh, and that person's in a fair bit of pain because 
um, acute inflammation does cause uh, more pain because of the secondary damage that comes. It can help to kind of provide stability and stuff, which is because of the pressure so that the joint or whatever it is that injures, is injured doesn't move around as much. But essentially, this acute inflammation stage is all about that big rush. You know, when you've sprained your ankle and it blows up like a balloon, that's your acute inflammation. Uh, during this stage, your body will start to produce new blood vessels to get help bring more nutrients and more um, of your immune system, those phagocytes and leukocytes uh, to the area to help protect your body. Um, and that's our acute inflammation. Phase two is the repair inflammation stage. So this can go from three days to six weeks, depending on the size of uh, the injury. During this stage, our leukocytes are cleaning up, getting rid of everything, uh, making sure that there's no leftover half pieces of body cell and stuff there. It'll help clean all that up. Uh, your body will start to produce new actual body tissue. So if you've cut your skin, it'll start to produce new skin cells. If it's been a, a torn ligament, it'll start to produce new ligament cells. Uh, but it'll also produce a lot of scar tissue at this point because scar tissue can be, be produced faster uh, to fix up and cover the area, but it's not as strong and it's not as functional. So if you get lots of scar tissue, that means you're more likely to have a recurrence of injury. So during this phase, you want to start to uh, use some uh, rehabilitation stuff that might reduce scar tissue uh, formation. And that normally comes with things like um, stretching, uh, some slow, low impact movements or maybe some massage. The remodeling inflammation stage can last for many months. During this phase, uh, your body is essentially rebuilding the area that was injured. Uh, so it's adding functional body tissue, so more muscle, more ligament cells, more skin cells, adding um, blood vessels, anything that was damaged is uh, essentially rebuilding itself. Uh, but you also still get lots of scar tissue during this stage. You'll notice down in the uh, image down the right hand side here that the healed section has a fair bit of scar tissue and the injured section is got a fair bit of blood and is a bit distorted the healing section still is not finished being healed okay that's going to sort itself all the way out so it begins to look more and more like healthy tissue and that's what rehabilitation is for at this stage rehabilitation is to help get rid of the scar tissue that's there so that your body is stimulated to rebuild more functional body tissue uh, so once the, once the scar tissue is there, your body's not going to replace it unless it's kind of stimulated to do that, which essentially comes with some kind of um, small injury, which was normally a result of um, the massage. Or sometimes you can do it by applying heat just to get some more blood flow there uh, in order to make sure that there's more nutrients. Uh, more nutrients means you're going to get better uh, functional body tissue and less scar tissue. So that's the inflammatory response. Uh, it's important to know the signs and symptoms of the inflammatory response. So they are redness, swelling, heat, pain, and a loss of function in that area. So that's our soft tissue injuries. We've looked at the tears, sprains, and contusions. We've had a look at some skin injuries, including abrasions, lacerations, and blisters. And we've also had a quick run through of the inflammatory response and how to deal with that.